Hi friends, welcome to Plexus Ortho. My name is Dr. Kanan Kumar and today we are going to discuss uh, the FMG recall uh, uh, ortho questions. So there were about uh, 7 or 8 questions. Um, so this is a recall based um, um, video session. So forgive me for any mistakes in these uh, questions. I have tried to compile the questions as authentically as possible from various chat boxes and from various sources. I hope uh, these are correct. Please do correct me if I am wrong and hopefully this is a teaching experience and this will help you in your future endeavors. So let's start off with all the questions. Uh, the first question was they showed you an image, uh, a very typical pathognomonic image. They said it was a 50 year old male patient, a 50 year old male patient presented with pain in the back with a radiograph as shown as follows. So they probably showed based upon all what the student said was that it is a bamboo spine right so bamboo spine is typically seen in, seen in ankylosing spondylitis they also saw the typical dagger sign that is you can see the uh, spinous processes which are fused and which is forming a thin dagger like uh, structure on the radiograph and there was a fusion of the anterior and the posterior longitudinal ligaments as well and this looked typical like a bamboo spine and uh, showed all the features of ankylosing spondylitis. So there was some controversy be because of the age. The age said 50 uh, but the, uh, the radiographic pictures were typical. So even though the age uh, could be on the, on, on the different uh, or outside the spectrum, because the radiograph was pathognomonic, you should have probably uh, ticked ankylosing spondylitis is my opinion. Okay, so. The answer to this question is ankylosing spondylitis because very typical features HLA B27 is positive in uh, ankylosing spondylitis cases you know all that it is a zero negative arthropathy it could have a triad of uveitis enthesitis uveitis enthesitis and arthritis so you must always look at the eye as well so sometimes they may give you a question showing typical features of ankylosing spondylitis and what else should you examine so you should look at the eye for uveitis okay so it is not paradiscal tb because in paradiscal tb you will have involvement of uh, one segment of the uh, spine that is uh, the lower portion of the upper vertebrae upper portion of the lower vertebrae and the intervening disc space because the blood supply to this is, is common and therefore this is called as paradiscal tuberculosis a multiple myeloma you will have the owl winking sign so in this case because the picture was pathognomonic for ankylosing spondylitis i think that should have been your answer based on all the uh, recall that uh, the students have given me so let's look at the next question they said a 20 year old uh, female male patient fell on an outstretched hand so you must remember fall on an outstretched hand is not only a coles or a distal radius fracture you can fracture anything from the scaphoid distal radius forearm elbow you can even fracture the clavicle so fall on an outstretched hand does not indicate a very specific fracture but it indicates that there is some kind of an injury right so based on his x-ray the following cast was applied in glass holding position so they are straight away giving you the answer in the question and what was the fracture so if somebody applies a glass holding cast remember that that is always a scaphoid fracture if it is a shaking hand cast then it is a distal radius fracture so if it is a glass holding fracture glass holding cast it is always a scaphoid fracture so remember one more key point in this is when the thumb is included in the cast it is always for a scaphoid fracture so you don't include the thumb for a distal radius fracture so when you include the thumb for a uh, for a, frac a cast application then it is always a scaphoid fracture right what is the most common scaphoid fracture that we know of it is a waist fracture what is the problem with scaphoid fractures they have a high chance of non-union and high chance of avascular necrosis what is other bone in the body which has a high chance of avascular necrosis it is the talus bone right so it is not the coles fracture what is coles fracture coles fracture is an extra articular fracture extra articular fracture of the radius it is not the coles fracture it's not the galeazy fracture you know galeazy fracture we have a mnemonic called the mugger mugger is m for montegia fracture where the ulna is fractured and g is for galeazy fracture where the radius is fractured so here it is a distal third radius fracture with dislocation of the distal radio ulnar joint 
it's not the Barton's fracture. Barton's fracture is an intraarticular distal radius fracture with subluxation or dislocation of the carpus. In these conditions, if at all you do a close reduction, you would always apply a cast without involving the thumb or a hand holding cast or a hand shaking cast. Whereas a glass holding cast is basically a scaphoid fracture. Now, next question they asked is what is the choice of treatment for the fracture shown in this uh, radiograph? I, I hope this question is correct. Please correct me if I am wrong. Right? So, they have shown you a transverse fracture of the patella bone. So, they have shown you a transverse fracture of the patella bone. So, transverse fractures of the patella bone are usually fixed with the help of tension band wiring. That is the choice of treatment. Plating is never done for patella fractures. Partial patellectomy should never be done. It was previously a procedure but now not done. And cast application can be done for a dis undisplaced fracture which does not require any kind of fixation. So for um, displaced patella fracture, you have to use tension band wiring. What does tension band wiring do? It um, converts the displacing forces to a compressing forces, right? Through a tension band wiring, you use a couple of K wires and then you use a stainless steel wire in a figure of eight fashion. So this is the patella. You pass a couple of wires like this and then you use the stainless steel wire in a figure of eight fashion. This converts the displacing forces into compressive forces. And which are the other places where you would use TBW? There are three locations where you would use. One is in olecranon fractures where the triceps is the displacing power which is pulling off the olecranon. Then you use it in the patella where the quadriceps is the displacing power or it pulls the patella, proximal pole of the patella. Then you can also use it in medial malleolus fractures. These are the few, few locations where you can use tension band wiring. If this is the x-ray that they showed you in your exam, a displaced patella fracture, then the treatment of choice would have been tension band wiring. So now there is a little bit of a controversy about what exactly the question was, but from what I could glean, um, it was a proximal tibia lesion, right? So they showed you a proximal tibia lesion here. It is an eccentric lesion. It's a lytic lesion and it's a 24 year old female who came to you with this kind of pain and swelling in the proximal tibia. If uh, the physis has closed, we all know this very well. If the physis has closed, then it's most likely to be a giant cell tumor. Okay, an eccentric lesion before the closure of the physis in non -like all likelihood is an aneurysmal bone cyst. Both these lesions are eccentric, right? GCT occurs after the physis closure. It is epimetaphyseal. Whereas ABC is, is most likely metaphyseal. So a lesion which occurs after the closure of the physis around the tibia or around the knee joint in a female patient, eccentric, and appear from the epi to metaphyseal region is most likely a giant cell tumor. Giant cell tumor most commonly occurs primarily around the knee number one, then in the distal radius number two. All other locations are far less common as compared to the um, knee and the distal radius. So this case typically fits into a giant cell tumor. Chondroblastoma will be in the epiphysis before the closure of the physis. Osteosarcoma is in the metaphyseal region. Aneurysmal bone cyst, as I have described, it occurs uh, before the closure of the physis, metaphyseal region, and is eccentric as well. It's very difficult to differentiate aneurysmal bone cyst and giant cell tumor histologically as well. So this is a confusion, but in all likelihood, the answer looks like giant cell tumor. The next question was, um, a eight-year-old child presented with pain and swelling in the left ankle after a fall. And this is the x-ray that they have shown. What are the management options, right? So in an eight-year-old child, uh, you would not do plating, okay? And because it's a distal ankle fracture, you would not do tense nailing or some kind of intramedullary fixation. You would ideally do cast application, but you have to do some kind of close reduction because you can't apply cast just like this because it is in a slightly deformed position. So therefore, the appropriate answer based on what I have guessed is close reduction and cast application. Cast application is the right answer, but you cannot do a cast application, cast application without some kind of reduction of the fracture. 
if you don't reduce the fracture appropriately it won't heal so therefore you should do a close reduction and cast application the next question was a 6 year old child presents uh, forgive me there's a mistake in this question it was a 6 month old child a 6 month old child presents with a bilateral congenital talipoequinovarus deformity what is the best option for treatment so in a child less than one year of age always remember in ctv or club foot cases you have to do a cast application manipulation and cast application in less than one year in one to three years you can do a soft tissue release or posterior medial posterior medial soft tissue release because cast application alone may not be enough then in three to six years you can do a osteotomy right and more than six years when it is a neglected ctv then you can do what is called as a triple arthrodesis so in a six month old child what is the treatment of option a treatment of choice in case of bilateral congenital talipo equinovarus and the choice of the choice is cast manipulation and cast application don't forget that okay in one to three years it is posterior medial soft tissue release in the age of three to six years it's oste osteotomy and more than six years since triple arthrodesis now this is a, to coming to the last question a 25 year old male patient presented with history of fall and pain and swelling in the clavicle region and they are asking which location is fractured most commonly in the fra in the clavicle right so you have the clavicular bone this is the lateral end this is the medial end right the most if you break it down into thirds so this is the medial third this is the middle third and this is a lateral third the most common location is between the lateral and the middle thirds the lateral end clavicle is much more rarer the medial end clavicle is far more rarer and this location is also much rarer so the correct answer is between the lateral third and the middle two third junction is between the medial two third I forgive me for the mistake there lateral third and medial two third junction is the most common location for a fracture and uh, you must remember that the displacing forces here the sternocleidomastoid is attached here the pec minor is pec major is attached and therefore this medial fragment goes superiorly and the lateral fragment goes inferiorly so the most common location where a clavicle is fractured is between the lateral third and the medial two third junction and uh, clavicle is a most commonly fractured bone in adults remember that okay so these were the eight questions that I could gather from uh, different sources. I hope I have not made any major mistakes in recalling the question. If I have made any mistakes, please do point it out. I will correct it uh, and get back to you. Um, so this is Plexus Ortho. Thank you for hearing me out. Good luck with all your future endeavors. I hope your exam went very well. Thank you.